Uh, I'm going to be telling you today about my ultimate experience as being a DevOps geek, uh, making things, bringing things home, right? I know that uh, usually your wives and uh, husbands or other home relatives uh, tell you, don't bring any stuff home from work. Don't bring home uh, a work that you didn't done there in your office. So stop it. But there is a philosophy. Philosoph the person consists of body and soul and mind. And mind is like said one time and will be for the lifetime. And DevOps is a mindset. And I believe all people who are here have that mindset of, th of making things perfect, of making things um, that you actually like to work with. Because what DevOps is, right? So you develop something, you create something, you design something that will be easy operatable. Uh, the same is with your home. It's you will ask yourself, why am I doing that? Why I want to make my home perfect? It's actually my scary picture making my home perfect. Uh, because again, because of the philosophy. So imagine that, a little story. So I, I always do a comparison. So dev and ops, developers and operations people, developer design, the, design and, and actually make a software and operation people try to operate it. In construction industry, the architects and designers, they're construction workers, and guess who is the ops? It's you. You live in that house, you operate that house. And I believe that many times there was a situation when you move to a new house or you buy a new house, you kind of like it, that's the best one that you choose, but you walk around and say like, you know what, I would make kitchen on that side because this place sucks. Or why didn't you put the pipe, one more pipe in this place? Or why don't you install more so wall, wall plugs, wall sockets? Why? It's like all is good, but this couple of tiny things are not good. Same with, with, with your environment. So you always want to make your IT environment much more perfect. And if it's not perfect, even you being an ops, uh, because I heard lots of stories that most of you, you grew up from ops people, right? So you, you go to developers and say, you know what? Uh, could you please not ship me a war file, but could, can you do this like in RPM package? Because installing RPM package is much more native than copying a zip files to Red Hat file system. And developers react like, oh, what? Why? And so, <laughs> because you are the driver. You operate, you, you have all this, uh, you, you experience all that problems. Same with your home. You as an end user, as, a, as an ops for your home, you want to make it perfect. And what things make your home perfect? I wanted to, to hide th these words first and ask the audience, but it's too obvious. Anyway, so you like comfort. You like usability, right? If you come to the room, you want natively put the hand on your left and find a switch to turn on the light. If you don't find the switch, well, if your wall is white, you will find the, the place where everybody are touching because it's going to be dirty. But uh, that's the usability. You like that. You like home automation. You want to clap the hands and line turns off. You, if you forget your uh, home appliance, you left it turn, turned on, you want it to come off after a couple of hours to not to burn your home or not, not to make a fire or you want to, if, if you see that the water flows too long, you want the valve to cut off, right? To not to, because you may have a leak. Same as your environment. IT environments is the same philosophy. And of course you like safety and security, and which is actually, when you speak about home, it's a, it's a safety. It does mean that all runs is designed, wires are not melting because of the overload and, and so on. And we have the same terms for the IT environment, absolutely the same philosophy. So we want to make it comfortable because we say that uh, we want to make it maintainable. So this is that comfort. We want to have right tools. If 
I just need to automate a couple things I would probably not install. Not, I'm not going to buy, no offense to Chef people, but I'm not going to buy enterprise Chef uh, license stuff and, and other things if I need just to automate one, one workflow. The same thing. But you want to have right tools in right places. Safety turns into security. I want to be sure that I'm and only myself, I mean like as a system admin or a responsible engineer have access to that environment. And I also want to make sure that it's maintainable and it's reliable. So we had safety for the home, we have reliability here. So my general message is if you have, <laughs> if you feel like maybe not comfortable designing the environment from scratch, just an IT environment, start, start thinking about that as it's your home. What would you do at your home? Do that at your IT environment. Maybe not literally like that guy on the picture because he brought all that stuff home and then deployed the rack. Don't do that. So th there has to be a limit <laughs> for that. I have a couple stories. Like uh, I did a consulting project. I do them actually very frequently. It's related to infrastructure management, consulting, DevOps stuff. See, there's a DevOps consulting project going on, how we are progressing now well. Um, and other stuff. And so during one project, we discovered an interesting thing. People are doing documentation management. Easy stuff, right? So uh, when they release version 1.0, they release documentation package 1.0. It's a set of Word documents, 40 pages, instruction how to install, deploy it, and all stuff like that. Uh, I'm not so saying that it's all manual. Oh, that's fine. That, that, that's the worst thing they have. Uh, that, that's that's the, the best, actually, thing they have. Um, and when the version 1.1 is released, guess what happens? They release an addendum to the documentation. And when version 1.2, they release addendum to the addendum to that documentation. And so on. And I said, um, guys, it's like maybe a stupid question, but why don't you release an updated uh, cumulative uh, documentation? So it's a 1.2. It's a 1.2 from scratch. So because if the person, according to their algorithm, if the person wants to install 1.4 from scratch, so you go 1.0, install it, and then you do this addendums, execute them one, one by another. It's a big company. It's a multi-million, they have uh, 8,000 employees all over the world, and they do like that. And I said, and they, they, they say like, what's wrong with that? I said, okay, imagine different things. You have a home, and you have no doors. And you walk in through the window. Well, you still get in, it's easily. You have like a lock on the window, you open it, you, somehow you jump in on it. It's not comfortable. You always have a dust, uh, it's dirty because you walk on the window, that's not a good thing, but you can make it, right? So, it goes. It goes how it goes. But is that a comfortable? Do you like that? So, no. So, so why do you do this at your IT environment? Why do you play it like that? The reaction was like, and I believe this is because of that. Yeah, you remember this yesterday's slides with Moby Dick. So this is that. This is that case. So they, they, they are in the sea. They want to do DevOps, but they are fighting some creature that prevents them doing that. Um, the other story is related to automation. Um, automation for the big deployments, it helps not only uh, just automate things and make operations much more perfect. Uh, for SaaS cloud companies, when they automate it, there's a good, um, there's a, like a KPI called uh, client acquisition cost. Uh, that's the cost that actually the client have to pay to get on board for the solution, right? So if you sub, for example, for Google Mail, if you, or Google applications, it's, it's a zero. You go just subscribe, you don't have to invest anything. But for the more complex systems, like in healthcare, you have to, they have to perform trainings, they have to do some customization for the clinics, uh, and so on, so on, and so on, many things. So it's like before they really start using the application, it, it passes a couple months, takes a couple months. And so what happened is, uh, I told them, you should have an automation. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it, the, the answer is, oh, it's too expensive, it, it, it's an investment. And we did the RI calculation and told them, you see, uh, so, but first we asked them the question, so what is your biggest pain in your business, business pain? 
They said, oh, you know what? We cannot onboard small clients because onboarding cost is like 15 to 20 grand. Um, and they don't want to pay this. And they are okay with subscription rate, but they, they, they cannot afford this, this entry level because 20K is too much. So do the automation because you spend a lot of time on manual uh, environment provisioning. And so if you do this automation, it's gonna, you, you have like much better uh, access to the market and, uh, and so on. They say like, well, oh, it's too complicated. So they, and again, example with the home. If, uh, let's say you have a, all, all, all homes have pipelines installed, right? So you have water supply, but it's like a small pipeline within your house and you have a leak. It's a continuously leaking. It's a small leak, but it leaks. So it, it has like two problems with the leaking, right? So at home, it's, it's wet. So you continue to have some water on the floor. And the second problem is you actually have this water leaking. So it's gone. So you have like a couple of cubic meters more and you pay the bill, which is very expensive. And of course you can continue paying the bill and you can, you can wipe the floor every day and you can make it. You can live with that couple of years, 10 years, 20 years. People do live with that, really. And the same with, with, with the company. You see the problem, but you just wipe the dust, you just wipe the water, you just dry the, the floor, and you live with that. And that's a wrong thing. So it's a different philosophy. You wouldn't like to do that at home, mostly. But people like that to do in their IT environment. They can live with that. That's fine. So that, that's like a two interesting stories. I hope they were interesting about how we break our philosophy and mindset. So at home is okay, and I see your mind is not okay. All right, uh, that's all about inspiration. Uh, since we are geeky here, let's see how we really can use some DevOps tools at home. And uh, I actually have two, call them home projects running. One is completed, and I will tell you about that in a couple of minutes. And the second one is planning. So if you have any advices, you want to help me with that, I'm open. So the project number one was the idea is that what if I install Zabbix at home and start monitoring everything? Uh -huh. And um, it started literally a f like a fun. Oh, let, let's start monitoring. Oh, I want to see my home connection like to the internet. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm downloading all that. Oh, oh nice. And then you start. And then I bought a UPS, this power supply, because you know the computer has to be protected. And, and then I connected it to my home small Linux box server. And I found interesting feature that there is a APC, this, the, the UPS is from APC, American Power Conversion uh, Company Mates, uh, and they, they have an APC UPS daemon. It's an open source implementation. What it does, it's through USB, Ethernet, whatever port you configure, it queries the UPS and get very interesting values. For example, frequency in your network, voltage, um, load, uh, probably somebody knows of things like cosinus phi is the other uh, interesting value about electricity supply metric. So, and of course, the DevOps guy thinks like, oh, I'm gonna plot them on the graph with Zavix. I, I start plotting them. And I found that, oh, I have actually the graph of my electricity supply during the day. Nice picture. And a couple interesting things are visible here. So this is like 1800, 19, it's like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. That's the worst time, right? The green line means that I'm on AVR. So the home stabilizer turn on and start increasing the voltage because everybody come from, home, uh, come from work they plug all things like uh, uh, TV, ovens, uh, dishwashers, everything. It starts working. And of course, the quality of electricity falls down and uh, instead of 20, 20, uh, 220 like you have as a standard, you have like 200. Still acceptable. I found it out that it's okay. My power supply comes out, oh, that's fine as soon as it's not 100, uh, 190. But it's not good for the electricity and uh, not, it's not good for your home appliance. So it just goes off and its lifetime is decreasing rapidly. So I start plotting this. Uh, 
I collected lots of statistics, like a couple of months. I knew what happens on uh, Christmas Eve. I knew what happens with electricity on, uh, if you're interested, I have all that statistic available. I can show you that. And I, I know, I even know when, what, you know what's interesting thing is Sunday morning. And Sunday morning, most people are at home. And they wake up. I know that I, now I know people mostly wake up at 10 a.m. on Sunday. <laughs> because at 10 a.m. you have this fall down. And it's like electricity falls like from uh, 220, which was like this, to maybe like 200, 190. This means that everybody wake up, make a coffee, Coffee maker makes uses lots of electricity. Um, uh, microwave oven. Uh, I don't know. Maybe somebody's doing laundry. I don't know what's that. But really, what was really bad? The middle of the day was okay, and everybody in the evening were watching TV and maybe scheduling some stuff also. So it was it was bad as well. So really, you can monitor by by monitoring the the voltage. You can monitor at least the life in your district. Maybe not the whole country, but in your area, so you know what your neighbors are doing, presumably. And so, but I, I collected all the statistics, and I came to my power supply company, showed them to them, saying, like, this is not acceptable. And, uh, and the, <laughs> the re their reaction was like that, saying, like, where did you get that? <laughs> and I filed an application saying, like, could you please fix my power line? And they said, no, 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 you know, according to the, because I live in Ukraine, it's like, according to the Ukrainian law, you have to uh, get a special committee, file special, uh, they have to be certified, you have to special, uh, file special uh, application, you have to have at least five witnesses that they seen, you have to use a certified hardware to measure, and you file that application, we have three months to review it, and then we go and fix it. And I said, uh, well, okay, let's skip that, just go and fix it, come on, it's, well, really, they, but they were so surprised by the statistic. So next week they send workers, and they really put the wires from one pile to another line, and the graph is below. It still has little problem in the evening. So that's a uh, that's a Friday night, I believe. So it's a you understand that Friday night is always Friday night. People use a lot of electricity. But look, this it's much better now. See, it's almost like a standard. So. The outcome is, if you use your DevOps philosophy, if you use your DevOps tool, Zabbix is, some people say Zabbix is not a perfect tool. It's a nice one for home use. It's a nice one. Uh, you can get a good result because really it, it results in a better opera home operation efficiency, which is you save uh, your, uh, the lifetime of your appliance. It makes them working better and you save money. You're not going to buy a new dishwasher in the next five years. You, you, it's going to be, pro, it's gonna be like probably working by a couple of years more. So that's the outcome. All right. Uh, like I said already about the experience with uh, power supply company, and one side effect is I improved my skills in Zabbix. I know how to write the custom monitoring presets now. I know how the agent works. I a little improved in Bash. I learned how the UPS monitoring works at all and uh, many, many other things. So when you do this kind of like a lab work, homework, you really get more skilled as an engineer. So that's a side effect, positive one. So that's the first project. Second one is in prototype stage. So I decided, oh, now I'm stronger and I want to move further. So I want to implement smart home system. And smart home is very expensive for, for two reasons. The hardware itself is very expensive. So there's an X10 protocol, which is a standard from like coming from 1970s and it's still as a standard. You use wires to communicate between devices. In every wall socket, you install like a very, very small, tiny device that is like actually a relay. Its cost, I found it on uh, one US online store, it's cost like around $70. And you have, I have, on the one part of my house, I have 28 wall sockets, so you can multiply it. It doesn't pay off. And what you can do with that is only you have a monitor, you can really turn on off all the devices in your house. So I decided, like, let's be simple. Well, I maybe not need all the stuff in every single socket, but I want to control very crucial things at home. I want to control 
water pump, so I don't pump too much water in case I have a leak. I want to control uh, some wall sockets where I usually plug iron, for example, or other heating appliance. So unless uh, I see that uh, the heating appliance worked for more than two hours, constantly not turning off, it's going to be turned off anyway for a couple of minutes at least because I suspect that something goes wrong and so on. So I learned about Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is not a nice thing. It's a small computer. You can install almost anything there. It's a full functional one. And uh, I learned there is a Chef Ansible and other things that can do the automation. So right now I'm kind of uh, studying that stuff and probably will solder also because I need to solder a relay for, for to commu uh, con actually do the switching. But that's the other project that is right now like in a prototype stage. So again, goal, make better operation efficient at home and make our home better, simply. So this is, okay. uh, this is it about the project. So I, I, a couple words about myself. I'm more than 12 years in uh, IT industry, working for software for more than 10 years in Viv Ukraine, traveling a lot to different parts of the world, spending a lot of time in Austin, Texas. Actually, that's the first time where I've been to DevOps days three years ago. And uh, yeah, I'm a geek. I started from uh, Dev, then Ops, and when Dev comes to Ops, he does, he, he's not able to withstand the, 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 this mess, so tries to bring uh, some order and actually start DevOps things. And so I'm active part of DevOps Days community. And uh, grab me on Twitter, add me on LinkedIn if you have any questions, if you'd like to talk about other interesting and not interesting home and not home projects, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions to the projects that Roman already deployed in his class or? Okay, maybe some of you have already some experience with Raspberry Pi and other appliances, and you can share that uh, during the like discussion.